Hey, Dr. Yerby here. For this upcoming week, um, ending on the 11th, what I need you to do is go to anydesk.com. So it's here in the on the screen over here. I think it's going to be that side. I don't know. I'll have to see when I edit it. Uh, anyhow, go to anydesk.com, download this small client. All right, so it'll download. It's a, uh, again, it's a pretty small uh, little client. And what you're going to do once that downloads, so depending on your internet speed, you'll see it like that. Just going to run this. And again, you're not even going to install it. And you'll see a screen similar to this. So you will have your AnyDesk address. But what we care more about is the machine that you're going to connect to. This is how you're going to be able to use our device seizure uh, product that we have licenses for. So currently I have, about I have five machines. So what I'm going to be doing is I will send you an email to let you know who is using which machine. So there will probably be, uh, I think we have about 20 people, so there will be three to four people uh, per machine. I may be having a new one other machine coming online very soon. And then what we will do is that group will work together to figure out when you guys are going to use the machine that you're assigned. The way that you'll do this is you'll say which desk do you want to connect to. And so say you're assigned Lab Machine 4. You would type in Lab Machine 4 at any desk. Uh, I'll give you the exact address of what you'll type in here. Yep. So it will come up with a username password, and I will get that password for you. And I'll send that in your email as well. So you'll enter the password. Hit OK. And then you'll see it will connect to the machine. And so you might see a black screen at first. Uh, if you see that, you'll see that there's monitor one and monitor two. So the machines that we're working on are dual monitor machines. So the login screen, sometimes it's on monitor one, sometimes it's on monitor two. It's just how it's set up. So check those monitors. And then you'll log in to the machine. I'll give you that uh, password as well in, in the email that I'll be sending you very shortly. So you'll be able to log into the machine. And then the other thing I want you to be able to do is just start our electronic evidence examiner. And this contains uh, several pieces of software from Paraben. So within that, what they now call E3 Universal, this E3 is a complete forensic examination tool. The thing that we'll be focusing on again is the mobile forensics uh, because that's what this course is and we'll have a uh, limited time. All right. So once you log in through any desk, what you'll be able to do then is the software has already been installed and configured for you. I just did that just a few minutes ago. So when you open the evidence, the uh, software, make sure you right click that and tell it to open the software as admin. It'll take a, a moment or two to start up. And you'll get to this screen. What I want to do is have you take a screenshot at this point um, make sure that you include the entire screen so I can see the date and time to make sure that uh, one that you're doing is actually one you did. Then the there's a quick tutorial. You can go through the tutorial for all of them. The one that I really need you to go through uh, is the navigation and the mobile device processing. So again, it's just 10 quick slides and it's certainly not going to teach you everything that we're going to cover in uh, this course working with this tool but it gives you a very brief introduction uh, which I'll kind of quickly walk you through it right now just why not I'm here so the first one is acquiring devices so if you were physically sitting at this computer uh, when you plug a device in and you start um, E3 I've got to get used to that new uh, terminology so you may hear me call this device seizure either now or in some videos that I recorded uh, previously before this, this update came out. But when you start device seizure or E3 uh, and then you tell it to acquire a device, that means I'll, I'll plug in 
I'll plug in a mobile device. Right. Crap, your ones. I haven't tried to see if it supports this yet because it's got a pretty large drive on it and it uses a USB uh, C cable, and I don't have one here at the office. So it'll plug it in, you'll tell it to acquire, it'll just detect the type of phone it is, and then you'll start the acquisition. Next, you'll ask, it'll ask you, depending on if the phone is supported or not, if you want a logical physical um, or a custom so we'll talk more about that there's some videos in the learning modules that will be posted in the course that describes the differences between logical and physical and depending on the type of acquisition you do you may see different data or you may see some data in the physical that you don't see in the logical um, sometimes vice versa but usually you'll see more in the physical um, Right. Next thing it tells you about uh, a, a custom acquisition. So if you just want to uh, recover just SMS or just call history, you can do that. So that would be similar to a computer forensics investigation when we're doing a sparse acquisition, right? So we, we know the data that we're looking for and we don't care about all the other noise that's around it. Then once you acquire your data, you'll be able to sort through it. Um, actually, there's a feature in the software that sorts the data, and we'll get into that more as the semester progresses. I will have some test cases already already available for you to work with when we start working in the software. Uh, so that will make it um, easier for us to all be on the same page, because if I tell you to go acquire your phone and then show me evidence that uh, you're being stalked. There, there very way well may not be that evidence. Hopefully there's not. All right. Uh, then you can view application data. Uh, so it does this uh, thing again called parsing where it's able to go inside some of the applications and give you some of the information. So in the first week we talked a little bit already about some of the challenges of mobile forensics. This is where we're getting into some of those challenges. So if someone's using Kik, which is a, a mobile app, KIK, uh, then maybe our tool, Device Seizure, or E3, uh, may be able to parse out that information and let us see those conversations. But if it, you're using Snapchat and it's been deleted, there really may not be any way uh, for our tool to view the information uh, on that device from Snapchat. Your best possible chance is to try to do a, uh, a subpoena. So you may be able to, to subpoena the information from the company. Uh, again, that's going to be difficult. It might charge you. Uh, you need to be law enforcement or perhaps an attorney. All the different rules and rates vary. Okay. You can import data from a, a case file that you may have received from someone else. Uh, you can import some data from uh, Celebrate, which is another very large uh, mobile forensics tool. Uh, I think Celebrate will probably be the largest and most popular with device seizure probably being uh, number two. You can import cloud uh, accounts. So this is, a, this is one portion of the software that, that was not available in the prior versions that I've worked with fairly extensively. Uh, so I will be learning this portion along with you. Sim cloning, again it can take a sim card and in the lab I'll show you a video of that in one of the learning modules we have uh, blank clonable sim card things and then uh, you can put that into a little USB device where you put the sim card in and then you're able to clone that sim. Right, so that's all of that one and I'll leave the other one there for you uh, at this point, you'll just be able to close that, and if you want to play around with the software, uh, you're certainly welcome to. So if I want to look at some of the existing files that we'll be looking at later, I can go to Add Evidence, and then I'm going to go here to select Paraben Tools, and then I'm going to say an E3 Mobile Data or DS case file. All right. And so what that'll do is it'll just bring up a Windows Explorer menu and the lab files regardless of which uh, machine you're on in our documents 
mobile forensics and then you'll see we have three different files here so if we want to open the iPhone that we have in here we'll do this it would ask you if you wanted to give it a new name I'll just keep the name that it has and then it's going to pop up a menu and ask me what kind of task what kind of automated forensics do I want to do to this uh, this device so again we'll get through this part later I'm just going to uh, leave it as it is the the main thing that I have in here is to yes sort the data and yes remove duplicates the other stuff I'm just leaving blank for now so we should be able to click this and double click this double click this this and then we can start seeing some information if I want to start looking at text messages uh, I can start clicking around and seeing some of that alright so that is an introduction of how to get started I'm not going to go any further than that because this video is already longer than it needs to be uh, thank you and for the assignment portion of this, just a quick recap, uh, what you'll do is uh, take a screenshot that you've connected to your machine and then take one additional screenshot that you have uh, started E3 or device seizure. I'm going to try to call it E3 in future videos. Thank you, Dr. Yerby. Have a good day.